for this morning. Uh, glad that you are here for worship today. We are in the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, and today's readings continue with that learning and seeing Jesus uh, ministry. But today's readings are a little challenging. Uh, we are reading about the death of John the Baptist. So, uh, but you'll see themes of justice and, uh, and uh, peace throughout our uh, music and readings for today. I'd like to welcome any guests and visitors who are here this morning. We're so glad to have you and look forward to getting to know you better. And also those of you worshiping online, we're so glad to have you as part of worship. And our sanctuary extends into your home. We see you as part of our worshiping community. And we're also so fortunate to have Victoria here to play flute for us. So thank you so much for being here today. We look forward to beautiful music. We do have one announcement, if you'd like to share your news. Is it working? Oh, it is yes. working. <laughs> so um, I'm with Social Ministry Team, and normally we used to give uh, donations to the food shelf, and a lot of people are still giving as far as with cash or, or you know, donations of gift card. Um, and uh, 2020, it's changed everything with COVID, and we kind of stopped it for a while. They do their program a little bit different, too, than over at uh, Our Savior's. But anyway, um, some people had just said that they can still like to do some donations and buy a few things. Oh, Steve, will you hand me that paper there? Um, so I called, I called uh, somebody, I talked to somebody that could tell us what some things that they would really need instead of just things that might go to waste or they have to store until next year. So um, they said that the 18 inch or larger backpacks, uh, Crayola colored pencils, low order dry erase markers, fine point black sharpies, and extra fine point and highlighters. Now, I got this list out in the, I put a box out in the narthex, and there's a list of all the things that you can buy. So that would be wonderful if we could fill the box before I'm at the, the 11th of August is when it's done, so. So is that the backpack program? It is the backpack program, and so, and. And there are still a lot of people doing supplying just the backpacks for everything, but yes, it's a backpack program. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. I also have news to share about the Wilberg family. John's sister Marge died last night. So they have had so much grief in these last few weeks uh, with. Uh, very close loved ones. So we will be holding the Wilberg family in our prayers today as well. I'd ask uh, that you please rise for our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. We take a moment of silence. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. 
We continue with our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, you come from all you from you come all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works. Give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we being defended from the fear of our enemies may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ our savior and lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children forward. Good morning. How are you today? Great. Good to see all of you. So glad you're in church today. Wonderful to see your faces. Yes, there's always room for you. Thank you. So this morning we are talking and hearing about a character from the Bible, and his name is Amos. And Amos is told by God that he needs to go talk to a scary king and tell him some hard news. Have you ever had a time where you have had to say something that was a little bit difficult and you were maybe a little bit scared to say it? You ever notice that maybe if you're in class and somebody is maybe not being very nice and you need to say something, say, you need to stop doing that or you need to be kinder. Or if you see something else that is not appropriate or not uh, helpful, Sometimes it can be hard to speak up, right? I've had that in my life, too. I've had times where it's been hard to talk, but you have to be brave in those moments. So Amos has to talk to this scary king, and he is, says, well, I'm not good enough for that. I'm just a farmer. I just uh, work with animals. I just help with trees. And God says, you are good enough, and you are strong enough, and I will give you that strength. So we can always rely on God to help us in those moments. So let's pray together. Dear God, Dear God help, us be brave. help us be brave. And help us to say the things you need us to say. Amen. You may be seated. And now we will gather around God's word. The first reading is from Amos chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. This is what the Lord showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel, and the land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee, away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from, the follow, from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. Salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring forth from the earth, and justice look down from the heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Also, the Lord will bestow his bounty. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your The second reading is from the book of Ephesians 1, chapters 3 through 14, or verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Christ Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for his fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, he, you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the acclamation. Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching for Jesus name had become known. 
Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officials and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter, Herodias, came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with others to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace be to you from God, our Creator, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible has many stories that pit arrogant kings against truth-telling prophets who speak God's harsh warnings to the people and to the leadership. And often the prophets step in and stop the ruler's reckless power from becoming deadly. Stories of Esther and Daniel in the Old Testament, they intervene and stop the violence. But today there is no end to Herod's ability to be violent. This story is awful throughout. John the Baptist is killed after a display of shameless decision-making by King Herod, where John's, wife is, or John's life is bartered without much thought in order to appease Herod's ego. He doesn't want to be embarrassed in front of his guests. And this is a story of dangerous power and the consequences of those who proclaim loudly God's word of repentance like John the Baptist does so well. Yet there is a thread of hope in this brutal story. After John is killed, his followers show up. They risk their lives to ask for his body and to give it a proper burial. Can you imagine, after all of this violence, approaching Herod's people and saying, I need the body of John the Baptist? You'd be publicly declaring that you are a part of John the Baptist's crowd, one of his followers. John the Baptist had a vision for a new world, one where people repent one where people try to do better, where they listen to God, where they value human life. And his followers through that, their action that day, taking his body and burying it, they live out his vision of respect. And when all seems hopeless, when it seems like this terrible power of Herod has won, 
John's followers show up and they have the last word in this situation. And history is full of stories like John the Baptist's followers, these people who do what they can do in the moment, who live in hope despite all evidence to the contrary, even in the middle of this terrible story of John the Baptist's beheading. And one of them is a woman named Septima Poinsett Clark. She is considered to be the queen of the civil rights movement, yet we don't often hear about her. She was born in the 1890s, was a daughter of an enslaved man and a woman who did other people's laundry for a living. And when she was 18, Septima decided she wanted to be a school teacher. She always wanted to do more for her students and her community, so she decided eventually to join the NAACP. She was never allowed to teach in the public school system in Charleston where she lived, and like many black teachers, had to take her positions in poor rural schools that served African-American students. And by the 1950s, Septima had been teaching for decades. She was a well-known, wonderful educator. And she decided to work closely with Thurgood Marshall and the NAACP to file a lawsuit in South Carolina to equalize teacher salaries based on certification instead of race. And eventually, the NAACP won this uh, lawsuit and Septima's pay tripled from $780 a year to $4,000 a year. That was the discrepancy in pay between black and white teachers at the time. And eventually the Charleston City School Board found out that Septima was a member of the NAACP and they told her that she needed to keep this quiet because membership in that organization was very controversial among the parents, yet she refused and she was fired from her position after decades as a teacher. And in this moment, Septima could have retired and done something else with her life, but she decided that she didn't want to stop teaching. So she kept teaching in other ways. She decided to devote all of her time to her activism and focusing on the literacy text, tests that were required for black people uh, to pass in order to vote in the South at that time. And these tests were designed to prevent these uh, black people from voting. And Septima decided to create a series of what she called citizen education workshops. And she would teach them in a place called the Highlander Folk School in Tennessee. And as she was teaching these workshops, uh, one of her students was Rosa Parks, who took her class just months before the Montgomery bus boycott. So the citizenship schools expanded, and they became very popular in the Sea Islands off the coast of South Carolina. And within a few years, there were 37 of these schools created. And people learned in these schools to read, to get registered to vote. But they also learned about activism, about politics and power. And in the final years of her life, Septima lived in Atlanta. And she drove all over the South, recruiting teachers for these citizenship schools. She never ended. Uh, never stopped being an educator throughout her whole life. One of my favorite quotes from Septima is this one. She said, you know, the measure of a person is how much they develop in their life. Some people slow down in their growth after they become adults, but you never know when a person is going to leap forward or change completely I've seen growth like most people don't think is possible. I can even work with my enemies because I know from experience that they might have a change of heart any minute. 
I know from experience that my enemies may have a change of heart any minute. I love that. Septima had hope for change when it seemed like nothing would ever be different. Her hope didn't depend on her circumstances and what was around her. Instead, uh, she hoped for things and worked for things, had a dream, like the followers of John the Baptist. She made a choice day after day to move forward with this vision for something better. She didn't seem stagnant or stuck. She taught one workshop and then another and then another. She started one school and then another and another. She waited for people to grow, to change heart, and always hoped that they could be different. And the writer of the Gospel of Mark includes John the Baptist's death in the midst of the commissioning of the disciples, which is a really hard connection between those two stories. John's story is held uh, next to these accounts of the disciples healing and teaching, and it's a stark reminder that discipleship and telling the truth have consequences. It's a foreshadowing of what will come later in the gospel when Jesus faces the same fate on the cross put there by a man in power who is conflicted but sways to the whims of the crowd who barters a man's life in order to save face. Yet those who work against Jesus in the Gospels never have the last word. God's power is found in vulnerability, in Jesus' willingness to go to the cross, to give up his power, to create new life. It is there that new life begins, where hope is born, and we get to be a part of living out that hope in this world, even when we can't see it or experience it, but to have a dream for this new vision. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise for our hymn of the day.
with the whole church, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One, in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. You gather your people into the body of Christ. Where your church is wounded, heal it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Where it is changing, transform it. Renew and strengthen our friends in Christ in Tanzania as they gather together in your name. In your mercy. From before the foundation of the world, you are God. Revive ecosystems destroyed by human greed. Curb our desire to put wealth ahead of the health of all who call this planet home. In your mercy. You establish equity and make justice. Within every nation, tribe, and land, Cause laws to be written and customs to be observed that protect the most vulnerable. We pray especially for places in conflict, including Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, and Russia. Today we remember your call for peace. Rid our society of all acts of politically motivated violence. Heal those who experience it quickly especially those affected by the recent shooting at a political rally. In your mercy. On the cross, your beloved son endured pain and death. Bring healing to those in need, hope to any in despair, comfort to the dying. We pray especially for John and family, Eric and family, Carla, Terry, Conrad, Carol Ann, Carol, Jeff, Carol P, Angela, Elaine, Cindy, Susan, Sue, those we name aloud or in our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. You send your spirit into this community of faith. Nurture our partnerships with other community community organizations, especially Centennial Community Food Shelf, our local police, firefighters, and those who provide emergency medical services, and our local school systems. In your mercy. All peoples praise you, O God. We give you thanks and praise for the lives of our loved ones who now rest in you, especially Mary Wilberg. In the fullness of time, gather us with all your saints in light. In your mercy. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace.
At this time, we receive your gifts and tithes for the mission and ministry of the church. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of them. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. And earth not full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome today to receive Jesus' body and blood. Those who are worshiping online know that this table extends into your home and receive these words of promise, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated and the ushers will direct you forward for communion.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.